got Tina, our English connection. Basically, the, the only real connection we have to England now that the Olympics are over. But anyway, good to see you this morning. And you do such a great job of kind of bringing a little bit of uh, what you grew up with in England to, to us here in America. And I'll tell you, we don't know that much about the uh, English cuisine. Well, I think English cuisine has a really bad press because I think we go around saying how bad it is, but actually it's very good if you use some really great ingredients. And I've had a fantastic summer working with uh, a lot of farmers markets mm -hmm. and getting my hands on some of the most incredible ingredients. And uh, I, I wanted to bring one of those uh, particular recipes out today to oh, show fabulous. you, uh, which is a goat's cheese and tomato tart. Mm -hmm. You say tomato, it, I say tomato. tomato. It sounds better when you say it. I is that right? <laughs> I say, I mean, think about tomato tart, and you say tomato tart. tart. Yes, I want to eat what you make. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but the point is, is it's an old English recipe, but these are local, absolutely. Local and I, that's what I like to do: is take some really good uh, recipes mm -hmm. from back home and bring them here using some really good local ingredients, organic where I can, and just having some. And the flavors are just fantastic. And um, what I'm doing today is this: this tart. Um, this is a pre. Uh, cooked, we call it blind baking, um, a, a pastry case okay. that I've already made. Uh, this is just a short crust pastry. It's um, flour and butter. And what we say is half fat to flour. That's how you oh, make it. Oh, I like that basic. ratio. It's okay. just a really basic. Really? That's it? Half fat to flour and water to and bind water. it. Okay. Yeah, that's all oh, it is. Wow. And then I just pre-baked that. And the reason we pre-bake is when we're using uh, moist ingredients, mm -hmm. it can make the pastry soggy. And you don't want a soggy pastry, okay. believe no, me. That's exactly so what I've got okay. here, in fact, I just wanted to bring this along. because this What this the is, heck is that? This is uh, half of a zucchini that's gone oversized. Now, we, we call zucchini in England courgette, because we, we use the French okay. term rather than the Italian. Okay. But when it gets to this size, we call it a marrow, and that's an English word, <laughs> a marrow. It's so huge. It's huge. So what I've done is I've just taken about an inch off this, and I've grated some down, mm -hmm. and um, I, I squeeze out the juice, because this, this is very, very watery. It's very okay. moist. So what I've done here, this is the, uh, this is the grated uh, zucchini. Um, I've got some uh, pepper salt, uh, some sesame <coughs> seed in there, mm -hmm. uh, and like I say, it's, it's much drier than it would be because I've uh, squeezed so it out. is such a versatile food. It though. is, and I like the fact that we can use this because it's one of those things that doesn't taste of a great deal, but if you get the right balance, mm -hmm. it can be really great. Yeah, really so we just put that in the base, Okay, just a little bit there. And then I've got some uh, goat's cheese. And um, what I've done on the website this week is actually say where I'm getting some of this stuff from. Oh, now, good. this is Capri okay. um, Creamery. Uh, they have about uh, 300 goats. They, they milk about 30 of them. And this is a feta goat's cheese. So it's a locally wow. sourced goat's cheese, which... Uh, Tastes amazing. Makes it and that I, much better. And I so wanted to do this recipe as soon as I saw tomatoes coming into season. I mean, these are just a few of um, the smaller, colorful ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been to markets and Incredible I've seen color. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different types of mm -hmm. tomato. We get like two varieties in England, and a lot oh, of them. Really? Is that oh, really? Honestly. Oh, no, and like the heirloom tomatoes. Oh, it's and just brilliant, else, yeah. and you just don't seem to get them. Um, and they don't taste that great because we don't get the sun that you have here. True. So we have a lot of green tomato and not a lot of nice, juicy, fresh well, red tomato. I'm glad you're enjoying our tomatoes. Oh, here. it's just been brilliant. <laughs> and uh, I, I say I really wanted to do something with this. So all I'm doing here is I've got mm -hmm. some herbs. I'm using two different colors. You can use any color. The small ones are nice and sweet. And uh, we just add this all in here. And then just to top it off uh -huh. is uh, some... Um, some herbs. These, this oh, is just okay. a mix, a mixture of herbs out of my garden because I have a little herb garden I'm at sure the back of my do. home. And we've got uh, sage, thyme, uh, basil. Yes. You say basil. 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 Uh, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, that's all we've got there. Fabulous. So that goes into the oven mm -hmm. at um, 400 degrees mm -hmm. for about um, 20, 25 you don't really minutes. Want to cook it necessarily. You just want to. Yeah, you just you just want to. Nice glaze. That's right. You want a little okay. bit of a glaze. The, you want the um, cheese just to get a little bit of crispiness to mm -hmm. it, and the tomato, and, and, they're, and they're really good. Those are fabulous. I would can't you, wait. Would you so like, pretty, absolutely. Do I want to taste try. it? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Shocker.